what is up guys, it is Thunderstruck115, and today I have got another Top 5 Zombies video for you. And in today's Top 5, we are going to be discussing the Top 5 Training Spots in Call of Duty Zombies. Now, I do first want to take a moment to apologize for not uploading in nearly a month. I'm sorry, I've just been busy with schoolwork, then I had to go up to college to visit my brother, who is in college. Then I got strep throat, so yeah, it's been, it's been hard, but... Yeah, but anyways, I'm back, making more top 5 videos for y'all to enjoy, so yeah, I'm, uh, first I gotta give a, another thing, I gotta give a quick shout out to Crown the Empire, who gave me the suggestion, if you have any suggestions, make sure you leave them in the, in the comments section, and it, they'll probably get featured. So yeah, but anyways, we're gonna be covering the training spots, which is the spots we use to train, which is how we usually high round in Call of Duty Zombies. But we're gonna be discussing the top five best of them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kick it off with our number five spot, which is going to be the stage from Kino Der Toten and Revelations. Now on Kino, I'm pretty sure y'all know it's the classic, uh, it's the classic stage strategy. You just run around, you train it with your thunder gun, or you train with your weapon with dead wire or whatever double pack punch ability if you're on Black Ops 3. And then yeah, it's just it's just, it's just a really good training spot because there's like you can do like a figure eight or you can choose if you want to like train down in front of the stage or train backstage. Now on revelations you can do you can do this in the fractured portion of the map. However thing is it's better if you do it in front of the stage that rather than backstage if you're doing it on Revelations because on um, backstage on Revelations is really tight. But yeah, it's a really good spot. Comes in at our number five spot. So coming in at our number four spot, we have the bridge from Mob of the Dead. Now, thing I like about this place is that it's nice and open, and there's a little bit of room for leeway. In case you make a mistake or things get too hectic, there's a place you can move back there by those sandbags. That way you can then just take the heat off. Or you can just train around them like normal. But basically, this thing is just a nice place. It's pretty open. And you, I like to train like this and then go back there if I have to. And then I like to also place claymores back there so they run through there and get blown up. But yeah. Um, uh, there are only a few problems with this. One is that it takes a while to get to this because take because building the plane takes a while but by the time that you be trained to high rounds you would need to get the get pack a punch and that's how you get it by building the bridge so yeah but yeah um uh, the second thing is that it is pretty far from everywhere else and that if you leave it's gonna take a while to get back because you gotta wait for the plane parts to respawn then you gotta get them refuel the plane then fly back here and so, which is basically, you gotta go back there to the prison to get anything you need if you need to pick anything up, like a jug, a shield, weapons, etc. And the other problem might be that there, the, uh, the Brutuses that spawn in every round, a maximum of four, I believe, each round. However, on the flip side, you can always, that always means that you will get a power-up at the beginning of every round. Which can be useful, like you might get insta-kill for like the first 30 seconds of the round, or you can get a max ammo to top you off, so that can be good, well. So that's why I have to put the bridge on Mob of the Dead in our number 4 position. So coming in at our number 3 spot, we have the comms hut area on Shinonuma. Now, the thing about the comms hut area that's so great is it's nice and open enough but it's good for training, there's room for movement, and yeah, it's just overall pretty good. What you need for this training spot if you want a high round is the Wonderwaff DG2, and obviously Jug. And then you probably also want Speed Cola as well, among other things, but yeah. But what I like about this is it is really open, it's pretty straightforward, not that hard to do. However, the thing is, I only like it that much in World at War and Black Ops 1, because in Black Ops 3, they changed the mechanics of the water slowing you down, and they made it, like, about the speed of, I'd like to say, the Mud Pit Maze on Shangri-La, rather than the actual, um, uh, than the actual water from Shinonuma, and it's really annoying, and that really debilitates you and makes it easy for you to die when you're moving through that area, but in Black Ops 1 and World at War, due to the mechanics in this, you can just jump through it, 
and without much problems. And yeah, it's pretty easy, and you can get through pretty by you can get by pretty quickly. So yeah, it's why it has to come in a number three spot because three shots from the Wonder Wolf gets you through a round. It's pretty open and just overall a really good training spot, but only the World at War and Black Ops One version though. So coming in at our number two spot on our list, we have the Buddha Room from Die Rise. Now, Die Rise it might not be one of my favorite maps, but that doesn't mean it ain't easy. This training spot makes this map super easy. That and the Wonder Weapon. So here's basically the basically here's how you get set up. You get the liquefier, which you can get on round one. You just take the elevator down, get some points from the bank. And then you just build it, or even then, it's still possible to build it on round one, assuming the parts are in the correct locations. So yeah, you get this liquefier, uh, you get your perks, and then you come here and you train and basically get to whatever round you feel like. Like, when I high round on this, usually I just die intentionally, semi-intentionally, or I just quit because I get bored. That's ma the main reason why I can't high round in zombies is because I just don't have the time or the patience to do it. Just feel free to insert whichever one you prefer. But yeah, you just run around, train up all the zombies, you fire one slick fire shot, kills them all, rinse, and repeat. It's, 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 it's just simple as that. Like, do I need to explain more? It's possible to even high round without your perks. And plus you got that and that over there in case things get hectic, so you can add a little bit of variability into your training. So yeah, it's, it's just super easy. Had to come in at our number two spot. And moving on down to our number one spot, we have the Lunar Lander by PhD Flopper or Widow's Wine on Ascension. This thing is just perfect. It's amazing. It's just this big, wide open square where there's plenty of room for error. There's an escape option, the Lunar Lander. Zombies mainly only come from one direction, though the occasional one might come in from two barriers. But it's just so easy. That, plus having the Thunder Gun, one of the most powerful wonder weapons in all of Zombies, it just makes this map tied with Shinonuma and buried with for the easiest Zombies map in all of Zombies. It, 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 this place is just perfect. I recommend that if you want to learn how to train, that you do it here, because it's such an easy training spot to use. It, it's wide open. It's hard to die, just make sure you have Jug, that's literally the only perk that you need for this training spot. So don't worry about the monkeys taking the rest of your perks, as long as you can keep Jug and Quick Revive if you're playing solo, then that's all you need. You can just keep buying your other perks back if you need to, because I mean you'll have plenty from racking up points to training. And so, yeah, it's, 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 just, it's, hard to, it's hard to just say how much this training spot is amazing, and it comes in our number one spot. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more. Also, tell me what your favorite training spots are in Call of Duty Zombies, and if you have an idea for a top five, then make sure you leave it down in the comments below. Uh, that's it. Peace!